You're listening to Answers from the Akashic Records, a world of empowerment service from Angel Rose and Ahanu. Hi, everyone. Ahanu and I are starting to provide a little bit more service to you, those who are members uh, of our website and have supported us through the years. We thought that we'd start discussing some of the things that Source has told us in our books, Ahano, and kind of give more little lessons to people about them. So I picked a chapter today. It's actually chapter 15 of, in a time of my change. first book called A Time of Change, uh, which you can order from a atimeofchange.info. And I picked the subject of prosperity, Ahano. Good one. Prosperity seems to be something that everybody seems to struggle with, with life on earth. Well, not everybody. Well, most people, people. <laughs> I'd say most people have yeah. issues with prosperity yeah. in one form or the other. Yes. So, is when we do these groups, these Akashic Record groups, we go directly to source and we bring questions to source. And this particular chapter was a chapter on prosperity. It was a topic that we chose to do this one evening, I believe in Ireland, we were doing it. Yes, that's correct. And we, the, the participants who were present at the live event brought different questions about prosperity to the records. So we always start out a topic with asking Source its definition of whatever it is the topic it is we're talking about. So this particular night, we asked Source what its definition of prosperity was. And it usually comes as quite a surprise. It was. It was yeah, a very interesting we all, answer. We all have preconceived ideas of what we think these things are. Yes. And so go ahead and let us find uh, yeah, Source's so I'll, I'll read definition. this. Yeah, I'll read this because Source has a habit of kind of going way over the material universe and answering it from a huge universal perspective and we have to understand that that universal um, perspective does filter down through the different levels so it's the same answer throughout all of creation okay okay so when we said um, I'm going to quiz you on this Ahano so pay attention okay what is source's definition of prosperity and the answer is Everything that's ever been created in the universe, creation itself, is the ultimate prosperity. Source describes creation as wonderment. We don't perceive the wonderment of everything that is in a big enough way. Prosperity is also direct communication with all life. In other words, if we were in an aware state, of prosperity, we would be able to communicate with people, birds, animals, trees, plant life, all life everywhere. This communication is prosperity. So I thought just that paragraph alone, Ahana, was That's quite fantastic. an interesting answer. It really is because you're talking about the awareness of being a part of everything as being prosperity. And it was something that the native and indigenous peoples, I think, were always aware of. They, they, they felt in commune with everything and therefore they felt that everything was theirs. Mm -hmm. It's like the Native American Indians saying that the land is not ours. You know, how, how can you claim ownership of land mm -hmm. when it belongs to everybody? It's, you know, these are wonderful concepts actually. They are hard sometimes to, to get a grip on, especially when we think in terms of modern society, because modern society has conditioned us to think of prosperity as being income. Money yeah, mon only. Money only, yes. Money and possessions. Yes. Right, so let me continue a little bit. Okay. So, Source goes on to say that it is the awareness that everything is conscious and can be communicated with regardless of its separate or individual appearance. The point Source is making is that we're all connected to everything. And if we were to, if we could truly feel that or know it, 
As an ongoing awareness, we'd always be in a state of abundance or prosperity because we'd be in a conscious flow with life. So the prosperity that Source is talking about isn't about money per se, except to the extent that money is included in the all that is. Source is explaining that because life never ends and everything is eternal, there is nothing but prosperity. I think that's an interesting statement. Yes. Think of it as I'm seeing visions of things expanding, expanding, and expanding. The idea of lack is so false, so illusory to this realization. There is no such thing as lack. It doesn't exist. The idea of lack is the first misperception and miscommunication that we have. That we believe in lack or perceive lack as a reality shows us how distorted our minds have become. Wow. So what do you say about that? I Eric? say it's absolutely powerful concept to for everybody really to get a grip of. And why I say this is important is because I know for many people who may be looking at this and perhaps don't have enough money to pay the rent or feed the children or something like that. So in that sense, a lack is very real. Mm -hmm. And we can't deny that that feeling of lack is very real. But what Source is setting out here is instead of focusing on what you don't have or what you perceive you don't have, because that in itself creates more of that. It, it, what you're talking about there, there is no creating more of everything all of the time. So focus instead on the wonderful prosperity that you do have. So in the case of a, a mother, say, with little child, children or a father with little children who, who are concerned about feeding them, instead of focusing on what you don't have in terms of food, focus on the, what actually is there. And what is there is that wonderful bond. What in the, is there is that beautiful love that's between you. What is there is the amazing ability for your body to recreate itself in every moment. You know, how it continually grows despite the conditions you might be in. You know, your fingernails grow, your hair grow, your, your, con, your um, physical body continues to renew itself, repair itself. All of those things, while they might seem somewhat abstract to somebody who's hungry, there is a truth about it that is actually freeing. It's very freeing. And then when you consider the abundance of grasses in the, in the yard or in the lawn or in the field and the abundance of wheat and corn and barley and the amount of apples that a tree throws off, the abundance actually is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And when we begin to think like that as opposed to focusing on the lack in the moment, then things change. And my thinking too, because we're bringing in the whole idea of communication with everything. And just as you mentioned, even when you think of all the seeds that a tree drops every year or pine cones or acorns or, you know, they're all over the place. There's, there's millions of them, really. And the, the word seeds is kind of an interesting thing because in a way that does give evidence to the fact that life is is eternal. It renews itself. It regenerates yes. itself. So for the human being, I mean, we see it, of course, when we get pregnant or give birth, but we also have thoughts that are seeds. And our thoughts, and I think Source is addressing us on a few levels here. Mm -hmm. One is, is that our perceptions, like Source mentioned two or three times, it's the idea of lack, which is a thought or a perception or yes. a belief that's incorrect so even if we could just make a decision perhaps that we're going to decide not to believe in the idea of lack anymore just like it's the same with with the idea of conflict you know why does conflict exist because we believe in it mm -hmm. why does any of why does death exist it exists because we believe in it so but there's something interesting here, Angel Rose, and, and I do believe that it will necessitate another discussion at another time. But it's about the layers of belief. So, for example, if you take the situation that I just described there about somebody who's hungry mm -hmm. or ha can't pay their rent, that's one layer of the 
the belief system. So it doesn't resolve the issue if you just say to yourself, oh, I'm not really poor or I've got plenty of food. Do you know, it's like affirmations. Affirmations don't work on the levels of affirmations. They only work when you collapse the rest of the structure that's around it. Do you, know, do you understand what I'm getting at? There's a whole layer of belief systems that must collapse in order for that to be true. Mm -hmm. Well, so affirmations do work, but you first have to be clear about your subconscious beliefs That's right. around it. Yeah, because what happens, you see, is when somebody says, uh, by way of affirmation, uh, I, I, I'm wealthy and there's no food on the table and there's hunger in their belly. The affirmation is correct, that's fine, but the ego and the rest of the structure is telling them otherwise. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, it very quickly becomes an untruth for them. They say, oh, that, that's not true. I'm telling myself this is true, but it's not true. But that's, what I'm saying? but that's when you have to keep redeciding, you see. Yeah, but that's what I because mean by the, the layers of, right, of belief. That's true. There are multiple layers of belief that must all be collapsed at the same time. So when Source is talking to us like that, and when you're talking about those beliefs and the layers in which Source is, is speaking to us, we're talking about all those layers. Mm -hmm. We're talking about really arriving at a fundamental truth that says we are incredible beings. We are absolutely prosperous in every possible way. And for us to shrink down into the tiny belief that says, oh, I don't have money today or I don't have enough to do this or I, whatever, they're a small belief in a small layer that somebody may have constructed for themselves. Well, it, because it is true that if you do just look around you, you do see that there is abundance everywhere. Physically, there's abundance everywhere. It's not, there, there's evidence of it. I mean, we're, we're here now, we're looking out our window and there's a whole row of trees lined up along a little creek. And well, you couldn't even count the amount of leaves that are on that tree. Okay, and come out and they'll die in the fall and they'll renew themselves once again. Or, you know, it, it does go back to something Jesus was quoted as saying by St. Thomas, where he said, in a blade of grass is eternal life. Okay, so I think, okay, so let's go back to the community. There's two things I want to go back to. The communication part of this with all life. Because that is, that is an energetic thing, you see, because when we perceive ourselves as individuals that are separate and distinct and apart from other things that you look at, for example, we're looking at a palm plant right now in our room, we're looking at this, a monitor over there, and all of those things seem to be some animate, some inanimate, but we perceive them as having their own individuality apart from ourselves and the truth is is yes okay they have a signature but there is a way to communicate with that where all of you are in a collective effort and we're going to as we go on this week we're going to get into this a little bit deeper because the other part that source brings up here as i was bringing in this information is all of a sudden it flashed the color red now we know in these groups that color has come through a few times. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But what I'm understanding now is that color has to do with the physical universe. Okay, that color red, that right. that spectrum, that frequency has to do with physicality. So red is an interesting color because it's vibrant, like your blood will show up red, for example, mm -hmm. and we know that your blood is the life force energy through your body. It's the thing that gives you life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can see how powerful it is in a positive way. Mm -hmm. But that color has also been subject to huge distortion. For example, when people get angry or they're frustrated, uh, their auras will look red. And that's, that's an overbalance or overabundance of red where it's not being used properly. Okay, whereas true, true red used in a positive way can be used to materialize things. And... We will, like I say, we'll get into this a little bit more because, of course, we could have a conversation about the chakra system, but that's a whole other it lesson. Is, yeah, it is, okay, yeah. but I just want people to keep in yeah. mind that red is a physical color. Okay, mm -hmm. it's a vibrant, alive, 
physical color for manifestation it has to do with creation so let's finish with this one little thought that w that please take this away with you when we speak about abundance and prosperity and consider love for a moment just consider love and we gave an example of say a mother with children when you give love away you don't reduce it from somewhere you don't say oh i don't have very much left now you know because i've given you my love you you one never considers for a moment that love is finite in any way see is that not abundance is that not true prosperity well it's interesting too that that we do use the color red to, to, to describe love all right we do and also that um you know that color has to do with passion and it has to do with desire and all of that okay mm -hmm. so red is an important spectrum for abundance but the communication with all life also is so important because it takes us beyond the boundaries of our perceived separateness and, and our, brings us into a communion mm -hmm. with the life force energy that is running through everything. So both of mm -hmm. those things are really important mm -hmm. in terms of a mindset for prosperity on all levels. But the next session we're going to have in just a day or two, we're continuing on our subject of prosperity. But the, sub the people who were in the group started to ask Source, well, what about guilt? What does guilt have to do with yes. prosperity or the idea of deserving? What, what does that have uh, to do with it? Because very often when somebody achieves something or gets something that they desired by way of prosperity or income or whatever, start feeling guilty. Or somebody's jealous or somebody's envious. I mean, so we're so going to get into it. this mm. other level other layer in our next conversation about prosperity and don't go away because source actually does address money go forth and prosper thank you you've been listening to answers from the akashic records a world of empowerment service from angel rose and ahanu to get the profound statements from the akashic records in your mailbox each week log on to worldofempowerment.com.